Hi, I'm Dave Bearing, Technical Director at TriStar, and welcome to video number two on why metal bearings fail. As I mentioned, one of the main causes of bearing failure based on Timken's studies is the lack of lubrication or um, some other form of failure due to lubrication. So we're going to talk a little bit more about how that happens and um, um, what the forms of failure could possibly be. Um, Again, if you've ever seen or taken apart a bearing that uh, has failed because of lubrication failure, it's pretty impressive. I mean, the destruction is quite, quite noticeable. If you look at the, these two pictures here, you can see that uh, the cages have been completely deformed on, on a cylindrical bearing on the left side picture, the right side picture, the races are cracked, the balls are corroded and, and peened. Uh, it's just it's just a mess and um, all of this came from lubrication failure so let's again talk about the nature of lubrication failures uh, as I mentioned before Timken said over 50 percent based on their study is due to uh, lubrication failures some other studies that I read indicated it could be as high as 80 percent because they're taking in consideration things like uh, water contamination that leads to breakdown of the lubrication, which then breaks down um, the ability to carry the proper film between the uh, metal surfaces. Um, and, but let's understand what lubrication is really needed for with a rolling element bearing. Uh, first of all, it's to reduce the friction. Um, these are, after all, what are considered to be frictionless bearings. And that frictionless um, status really comes from the fact that the lubrication is basically generating a hydrodynamic film and preventing the metal to metal contact. So if it weren't for lubrication um, you would get all kinds of problems which you can see in these failures. The metal adhesion, um, heat, you can get spalling, you can get uh, the Brunelli, all the, all the other things that we talked about will happen uh, obviously when there's a lubrication failure. Um, metal to metal adhesion, as I mentioned in the first video, is very visible under a microscope. If you take a look at the contact area between a ball and a race, um, it, it really is kind of interesting, especially under like a 200 power microscope. You can physically see uh, small shards of metal that are basically bonding to themselves. And when that happens, it can lead to full seizure, but more often than not, what happens is it's, it's actually causing um, more frictional heat being generated because the bearing's having to work harder to get the job done. Um, so that heat dissipation is obviously going to be handled by the lubrication. Um, there are so many different varieties of lubrication, both greases and oils. And what we're talking about here is not necessarily fully submerged applications like in gearboxes and engines, transmissions, things like that. Although breakdowns of, of lubrication in those environments will also lead to these same problems. But heat dissipation is obviously the, uh, a very critical part of why lubrication is needed in metal bearings. Uh, corrosion protection. Um, obviously oils and greases help prevent the buildup of rust and uh, help to block some other corrosive contamination. Uh, but as I mentioned a little bit ago, um, the contamination of greases via water is really quite interesting. In fact, there's a, a Timken report that I read that talked about how the life expectancy of a bearing just from a minute, less than 2% uh, water exposure to the grease can uh, dramatically drop the life, up to 50% less wear life. So, you know, corrosion protection, great, but it also introduces a lot of other problems potentially. And then finally, if the bearing's being properly maintained, which means you're getting zerk fittings, you're getting zerked all the time, there's new grease being pumped in, and, you know, things are being paid attention to, then uh, it helps to remove the debris. Um, and as I mentioned in video one, if you have grease that's collecting debris, uh, it's literally like making a lapping compound and it's just going to eventually wear out the balls and the races and the cages and now your tolerance is open wide up and uh, your bearing fails. So, um, 
those are the main reasons that, that lubrication exists for rolling element bearing. So looking at these things a little bit closer, what happens if we use the incorrect lubrication in an application? Well, this really kind of comes into play if uh, the, the lubrication that's being used, for instance, is not adequate for the temperature that the application is running in. Uh, if you're using a, a grease that's only good to 250 degrees Fahrenheit and it's outside of an oven door that's seen 400 degrees, obviously you got a problem. Um, so incorrect lubrication is, is part of the whole picture of why lubes fail. Um, the, other, the other part of the incorrect lubrication is that sometimes the viscosity is not right. You can have too thick, too thin, and uh, that, again, depending on the loads and the speeds, can have an adverse effect on the wear life of the bearing. Inadequate maintenance. Um, the time that we take in between maintenance um, on a bearing is, is really critical because uh, in depending on the environment, obviously, if we're getting contamination from airborne debris, um, you know, like things like dust and, and maybe even debris that's coming off the, the workload that's being handled by the bearing, um, all of these things, as I've mentioned before, can lead to problems with contamination getting into the grease, um, changing out the oils, changing out the greases completely, especially in sealed um, applications like the gearboxes and, and, and so forth. Uh, if, if those things don't get properly handled uh, on a regular basis, um, then it's going to lead to potential bearing problems. And so, um, you know, again, this just points back to lubrication failures being a major problem. Over lubrication. Now, that's something that um, I, I think a lot of people don't think about. Um, it's like that example I was telling you about the, uh, the very, very crazy uh, requirements for cleaning and, and reloading those bearings at that car plant. What was really interesting was, you know, the instructions also said no more than 40 grams of grease uh, to be put into those bearings. Uh, 40 grams of grease, I don't know too many maintenance guys working in an automotive plant that are going to pay attention to 40 grams. Um, so, you know, more likely what was happening is they got a grease gun, they zerked it, and whatever went in, went in. Um, and that's why that particular automotive plant was spending almost a half a million dollars more than they needed to be spending on grease each year. Um, but over lubrication, there's some interesting other um, details about that. It, you may not know this, but a grease gun, a uh, typical grease gun, can produce up to 14,000 psi of force out the nozzle. And you can imagine if if uh, you've got sealed bearings and people aren't paying attention, it's very possible that you can you can pump those seals right out of the bearing. Um, you're also putting a lot of stress on the surrounding housing, uh, the seals that are in the housing. There's all kinds of things that can be going on because of over lubrication. Um, just like with our products, more is not necessarily better. And so it's very important that uh, with, with rolling element bearings that they have to pay attention during maintenance to be sure that they're not putting too much grease or not putting too much oil in the reservoir that can cause problems with the bearing. And finally, lubrication failures, contamination or corrosion from external service, uh, sources. Uh, again, as we talked earlier, um, this contamination and corrosion comes from a lot of different sources. Uh, it's it's all, all environmentally driven, but um, chemicals, sewage, um, water in whatever forms, uh, and as we talk about with our plane bearings, we look at water and dirt at the very nitty gritty, if you will, um, because there are certain waters that do more damage than other waters. You know, salt water will act, obviously uh, cause more corrosion with certain types of metals. Um, so this contamination and corrosion from external services or sources is, uh, is going to lead to these types of damages, the resultant damages. Abrasive wear to the races and balls, 
Um, that obviously comes from that external hard debris. Micro cracks in the races, uh, that's also partly because of solid wear particulate in the grease. Uh, Brunelling, um, again, due to loading or improper loading or improper application of the bearing. Uh, that leads to vibration and the vibration then obviously leads to further damage even to the point of, of damaging the steel. Uh, seizure of the bearing due to overheating. And again, the overheating can come from uh, too tight a press fit, too tight a fit on the shaft, basically squeezing all the components of that bearing into uh, a less than uh, appropriate condition, and that causes the overheating. Um, and then microadhesion uh, between the balls and races, which ultimately leads to a loss of tolerance and failure. So, you know, obviously lubrication, Timpkin's got it right. If, if you've got uh, a problem with the lube, uh, or you can't get in to maintain it, um, or you've designed in the wrong type of lubrication for the application, it will cause headaches and it will cause failures. So keep that in mind as we head down the road towards uh, video number four, we're gonna be talking about uh, TriStar Solutions and a lot of that has to do with lubrication. So. Thanks for watching the second video and uh, stay tuned for video number three.